I'll be spending one month traveling through the Southeast Asian country of Vietnam. Wow, you walk in and you're immediately greeted by this giant statue of Buddha. Starting in Hanoi and working my way down to Phu Quoc, I'll get to experience the cities and the countryside while checking out some of the main attractions along the way. I just want to saw the trap. You're going to have to crawl now. If you're claustrophobic, that is not the tour for you. It's probably the best hour and a half of fun I've had in Vietnam. All right, we begin this Mekong Delta tour. One thing I do not miss is the little toddler chairs. They just killed your lower back. Oh, this is something else. On this journey, I'll show you what it's like solo traveling the country from its fun times oh my God. This is and not so fun moments. If I had to choose a word to define Walker Street, it would be deafening. From Hanoi to Saigon, join me on this epic two-part adventure traveling southbound Vietnam. Welcome to Italy in Vietnam. <laughs> that drop snapped my neck. Hi. <laughs> Happy ending, right? Let's go. My trip began just two weeks ago. I started in Hanoi, where I got to explore much of the old quarter. There's very few cars. It's very overwhelming, very overstimulating, but I miss this. I miss this so much. I then went on a day trip to Halong Bay with Marcus, who I met while exploring. These limestone peaks kind of reminds me of like Phi Island in Thailand, but this is like on a much grander scale. From Hanoi, we headed into the countryside of Phong Nha and Nimbin before arriving in Hoi An. I've enjoyed my time in the countryside of Phong Nha and Nimbin, but as far as cities are concerned, this is the prettiest. I'm still in Hoi An, and here is where we continue. Good morning, second day in Hoi An, and what we're gonna be doing today is something called the basketball tour. When I was searching online for things to do in the area, that seems to be a very popular attraction. I have no idea what that is, but it looks like a really cool experience, so yeah, we're gonna go check that out today. Ready? <laughs> The tour included a motorbike pickup, which was a scenic view weaving through the narrow back roads and local fields before arriving. <laughs> hey, hello. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I hear sounds of a party going on. It's like a basketball traffic jam. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on right now, but everyone's getting pretty ramped up. Oh, okay, so apparently there's a show going on right now. That's what all the excitement's about. That was pretty cool. Really impressive that you could just spin around like that. The show going on over here. So like this whole river has like different spots for different shows. That's really cool. You know, the net casting the other side, you can feel the other side. Whoa. Did he catch anything? That is the question. <laughs> Now 
Next up, was trying our hand at crab fishing. Whoa. Ooh. Here we go. Hey. Hey. Well done, well done. Oh, look at that. Natural. Oh, oh. Catch and release. You just dump it in. One, two. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that basketball experience was a really good time. It's probably the best hour and a half of fun I've had in Vietnam. So today I'm going to be heading 30 minutes outside of Hoi An to another area called Da Nang, or close to Da Nang, to check out this place called Marble Mountain. And this time I'm not going to make the same mistake I did with Paradise Cave, and I'm bringing my main camera. So yeah, and then hopefully we'll get to explore some of Da Nang before having to come back to Hoi An to drop off our rental bikes and catch the 5.30 bus to our next area, which is gonna be Dalat. The Marble Mountains was just a 30 minute ride from Hoi An. Uh, so I made it here, despite the fact that my motorbike that I rented has no rear view mirrors and the speedometer didn't work either. <laughs> and I can see why Vietnam uses excessive honking, because it's not like it's rude, it's more like a you know, little beep beep, just a tap, just to let you know, hey, I'm, I'm right beside you, be careful. Anyway, this is where we're heading up. As you walk in, they're playing, uh, can you feel the love tonight on the speakers? <laughs> This is the grand entrance. This place is jam-packed. Early in the morning, it's only like 9.30 in the morning. The Marble Mountains is a cluster of five limestone hills named after the five elements. Each mountain is a cave entrance to temples carved from the rock with several Buddhist shrines and numerous tunnels to explore. Wow, you walk in and you're immediately greeted by this giant statue of Buddha. Hopefully I get to see every section, but I'm just going to follow this path. I just crawled through the tunnel that was behind the Buddha, and this is what you find. There's cave carvings all throughout this tunnel. All right, now we're off to Heaven Gate. Made it to the top, not the best view. Got the beach over there, which I haven't gone to yet. And it's mostly development and city. Displayed within these grottos are many statues of religious depictions, along with Hindu and Buddhist images, all crafted from the marble. Just started to rain. You can see the rain coming through the skylight of the mountain. So I'm gonna start heading back now because I don't want to be caught up in this rain. I've seen a lot of temples, but being that this one was carved into the mountain and that view is so epic. It's probably one of the best ones I've seen. I'm so glad I got to see that grand view before the rain put it into the day. The rain did not let up, so making it back was not a pleasant ride. I am completely soaked, completely soaked. Despite that, I still managed to have sufficient time to get myself situated, meet with Marcus, and catch the 5.30 bus to Dalat. It's not bad. Luxury, huh? Hoi An to Dalat would be an exhausting 13-hour journey. Dalat is named the City of Internal Spring. Sitting 1,500 meters above sea level, its misty-covered valleys make the year-round weather cooler than Vietnam's usual tropical climate. in the morning we made it that was a rough ride man we spent the morning recovering from the long ride and afterwards decided to rent motorbikes to check out a nearby attraction all right day number one in dalat we arrived like at 5 30 in the morning rested up a bit and our first activity for today is some action adventure we're gonna go check out a waterfall and it has an alpine coaster in it don't know if it rides to the waterfall around it above it who knows but we'll find out soon oh, 
<laughs> See you on the dark side. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that was sick. <laughs> that was fucking wild. Though. That was wild. Wow, that really gets your heart pumping. And now we're gonna go check out that waterfall. Uh, this is something else. It's a good thing they got the Alpine coasters because you can't swim in the waterfall. Otherwise, you just come here, stare at it for two minutes, and then you'd be done for the day. All right, round two. <laughs> we're just cruising now. I think we're just making it back to the entrance. Oh. <laughs> that was a fun day. We only had one more day in Dalat, and seeing as the weather wasn't letting up, we decided to leave the same day, catching the next bus, nine hours, to Ho Chi Minh City. Ho Chi Minh City was previously named Saigon, and currently both names are used interchangeably. Saigon once was the capital of the South, until the end of the Vietnam War. It was then changed to Ho Chi Minh City in 1976, in honor of Prime Minister Ho Chi Minh, who campaigned for Vietnam's independence and was president of North Vietnam from 1941 to 1969. Well, good morning from Ho Chi Minh. And if you can hear the sound of my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather. Started in Da Nang, where I did that 30 minute drive in the pouring rain where I got completely soaked and didn't get any better when you spend 13 hours on a sleeper bus with the AC just blasting on you the entire time. I don't normally get sick. If I do, it's like a slight fever for four hours. I'll sort it out and I'm good to go. Went to the 24 hour pharmacy they gave me a bunch of pills. I have no idea what they are, but I am taking them. And on top of that, I have a slight stomach bug, which I can't recall the last time I... I can't recall the last time I've had a stomach bug, but now that I've changed plans, being here a day early, it gives me a full day of recovery because there are so many things I want to do in Ho Chi Minh City, starting with seeing the Gucci tunnels tomorrow. These tunnel systems we're going to see were of great importance to the Viet Cong as they were used in avoidance of military forces during the war. The first level for fighting, second one for children, women hiding down there, and the third level for what? To avoid big bombs, like B-52, couldn't destroy the third level. Yeah, but anyway, today you go down the second one. Yeah, and you can move inside the tunnel, 20 meters long, 40, 60, 100 meters. It's about an hour's drive to the Gucci tunnels from Ho Chi Minh City. So this one, the uh, secret entrance of the tunnel. So why they call the secret entrance? Because in the war time, the yeah, guerrillas, Viet Cong, they close this entrance by the lid. Viet Cong, uh, they hand on the landmine and the lid. So when the Southern Army open the lid, the landmine explode. Yeah. And then this entrance was collapsed by landmine. So Southern Army, no way to go inside the tunnel. Yeah, my guys. That's seriously tight. I know we're doing it for entertainment purposes, but that is no joke. This one is uh, the trap. Yeah, the spike. Bamboo trap. When it step on, what's up? Enemies fall down here. And it's sick by the left. Ooh. Very hard for Southern Army to recognize who were guerrillas, who was militia. Because guerrillas here, they were not army. Guerrillas from local people, from farmers, from militia. Daytime, they are farmers, but nighttime, they were fighting. 
even old people and women. Uh, so Viet Cong guerrillas, they work everywhere in Vietnam. What is place? It's the termite. Termite, but not termite. Fake termite by human, by the people. So Viet Cong dig small hole here for what? For air ventilation. So Southern Army look at this one, so they just guess this one only termite, nothing else. Viet Cong put some chili and pepper on the termite mouth. Yeah, but it was the bad way. Because when the dog smell it, they cover in by chili and pepper. So Southern Army they thought something wrong here happened here. Mm. Right? But after that, Viet Cong, what did they do? They stolen American uniforms. For what? They cry it to become powder. They uh, cover on the mouth with bamboo and leaves. So when the dog smell it, they thought Southern Army smell. So the dogs couldn't recognize. And this tank, yeah, came from Southern Army base because of chemical agent orange and napalm bombs. Destroy the jungle because in wartime, Viet Cong used the jungle for hiding and fighting. So very hard for Southern Army to recognize to fight them. Yeah, that's why they always destroy the jungle, destroy the trees. You can see a bullet hole on the tank shell. This one. AK-47. Yeah, this one. So for first one here, when enemy yeah, step on the trap, three oxen. Oh. This one is some very more effective. They stick form. Yeah, head to legs. Look like a window, but not window. Cause a Vietnamese sandwich, hamburger trap. Mm -hmm. okay, body here. See? So fish trap, just one way only, couldn't go out. So anybody see? Yeah. Yeah. So local people, they use this one. So when Southern Army opened the door to get to the house, this one, yeah, you know, falling down. Yeah, putting what time? Quicker, uh, faster. Yeah, so when this one falling down, and Southern Army stopped the trap in the middle. But when they stop this part, the bottom still swing up. Yeah, three accent, right? And stick it here. No more happy hours. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so their, their strategy is so basic but really effective. Brilliant. We then got to try some of their firearms. This one is uh, M30 and M60. So on my hands, I have two sandals, but one special design. U.S. Army, they burn in class. After burning, only edge, the edge on this area. So when we come step on the edge, they left many footprints. So Southern Army, they follow footprints of VC. That's why Viet Cong, they make the special one. So on my hands, which one, the special one? Wait here. I'll just say left. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm just guessing that though. Ah, uh, yeah. It's the right, uh, the backwards footprint. No, this one. This one is uh, the backwards sandal. Time for the tunnel highlight at the tunnel today. So we enter the tunnel from here. Yeah, up to, yeah, over there. Many, many exits for you, right? From here to the first one, shortest one, only 20 meters. To the second exit there, about 40 meters. And next one, 60, and then that one, 80. So every uh, 20 meters for one exit. Yeah, so if you want uh, uh, to be a long way, you can keep moving. What's the name? Stop. Stop. You keep moving, uh, Anthony? Yeah. Okay. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Yeah. This is tight. And I gotta tell you that as tight as this is, they actually expanded it for tourists. So you can only imagine what your life must have been like going through this day in and day out for years. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, keep moving. <clears throat> yeah. There you are. This is seriously crammed. What the? 100? Yeah, yeah. Okay, go. Okay, keep moving, keep moving, hello. Yeah, what the? 
It's getting extremely tight. Tighter? Yeah. Much tighter. Look at that. You're gonna have to crawl now. Oh, we made it. This is the end. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Right, that was extremely hard to film. If you're claustrophobic, that is not the tour for you. Fucking out of breath, bro. Out of breath. Who's that? Definitely puts things into perspective. That Gucci Tunnels tour was fantastic in the learning experiences, of course. And L, who was a great tour guide, and as entertaining as he made it, at the end of the day, that was people's reality. The strategies that they used to outwit and survive were just brilliant. I mean, very basic, because we're not talking about soldiers. I mean, they didn't have the technology the Americans had. These were basically farmers. Some of them were women and some of them were children. Afterwards, we watched a documentary in one of the bunkers and those kids couldn't have been no older than early teens. Very, very tough to watch. And the strategy when they were using these traps was to do more damage using less. They were meant to hurt and injure because if you are a soldier and you see your man over there injured, you're obviously gonna go over there to help. And while you're there, you're basically a sitting target where you're at your most vulnerable. And then this morning, I went to the War Remnants Museum, and that was, um, that was a very heavy and graphic reminder of why we should never get to that point again. Obviously, I didn't film too much of it because, you know, one, I don't like filming in museums. It never does it justice. And number two, it's a very sensitive topic for me to be walking around with a camera and causing attention to myself. But, you know, I know this video is about me having fun and adventures and, you know, seeing beautiful sights and making friends and all of this stuff, but there's no way you could not visit Vietnam and at least check it out because it is a big part of their history. That evening, Marcus and I checked out Saigon's nightlife, the Boy Vien Walking Street. If I had to choose a word to define Walking Street, it would be deafening. I am not a bar or club person, but even if I was, I would not be able to tolerate that place for more than five minutes. It is just so loud. Overstimulation. Every place is trying to compete for your attention. Each bar is playing loud music, louder than the next bar's music, and all you get is like this distorted sound of just chaos. I don't know how anyone could have a conversation there, let alone be an employee that works there on a daily basis. You would go deaf. And I do mean a daily basis because that place is like that every day. So needless to say, um, that's going to be a once in a lifetime experience for me. After the night's craziness, I had to be up early in the morning as I'll be doing a group tour to visit the Mekong Delta. It'll take two hours to get there and we'll be boating along the river referred to as the River of Nine Dragons as these branches cover an area of over 40,000 square kilometers making the islands, rivers, and swamps within the Mekong, Vietnam's prime region in agriculture and aquaculture. We have a lot of soil inside, so it makes the color of the river, it has a round color. You will think this is like a dirty river, but it's not dirty here. With the alluvium soil, it's very good for fertilizer. It was a short ride to our first stop, where we gathered for a snack before being entertained with local music. had a little bit of a snack and some live music. We then had to take a shuttle to the other end of the island. All right, we begin this Mekong Delta tour.
That was fantastic. Going through that river was magical. After, we stopped at a tea shop and got to sample some of the fresh honey tea. And, 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 and no, not after <laughs> but at the end of the course, I have like no? three cars. We have just one course, so I need one course in there. For me. Nah, nah. When the male bee die. When they sting you. The male bee, they will die. When they make love with the queen bee. And that's all. Happy yes, ending, yeah. right? <laughs> Do you want to hold and take picture? <laughs> this is for you. Well, how do I put it down? Now you're stuck. Yeah, they all have I'm the stuck. girl, the lady over there. She also wants to take pictures. Come on down. <laughs> I'm passing the torch. Come on. Uh, take it. I'll take it, please. <laughs> So after playing with bees and snakes, we're going back on the boat to the next part, which I think is uh, Coconut Island, because this may have been Unicorn Island. I'm a bit confused with the tour right now. So the first island we went to was Unicorn Island, and then we went to Coconut Island. This is the young coconut. With the young coconut, the meat inside it a little bit, but the juice inside it uh, sweet. This is the own coconut. Uh, with the own coconut, the juice inside it a little bit sour. And but the meat inside is very thick one. The local people, they can take up the coconut husk by that way. They just read it like this and take it out. But I'm not the professional for doing, sorry. <laughs> and can you get, with the professional version, can you get how many coconut they can take it out? 250 coconut they can take up in one hour. If they're working about eight hours, they can take up about 2,000 coconut per day. We will have the coconut powder. They have a lot of coconut milk. not the plastic and with the rice right paper it's not plastic we can eat that also i wasn't too interested in this part but i did appreciate the thought process of the wrapper being edible we try the snake wine <laughs> does it taste like snake or chicken no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. It's been a long and active day on the Mekon, and we had one final stop, riding through the canal to a new area of the island where we stopped for lunch that had a very random zoo. That makes me nervous. That would definitely ruin my day. Hi, right, thank you. And I think that concludes the end of this tour. What a great day this was. That Mekon Delta tour was really fun. Me was awesome. Very comical and playful. She really made the whole day really fun. Happy ending, end. right? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of knew ahead of time that it was going to be a bit touristy. You know, they kind of pitch you things, but you know, it's a very small and poor village, so they have to make a living. But it wasn't like they pushed too hard. Aside from that, you know, if you took that all away and just focus on the main attraction, which was being on that Mekong Delta River, I say the day was pretty awesome. Now, tomorrow will be the start of the tail end of my trip, which is going to Fuqua Island where I'll spend the remaining days of my trip there, waking up at five in the morning because my flight's at 7 a.m. Plane is delayed for 30 minutes to head to Fuqua Island. This was one of the shorter trips, coming in at just two and a half hours to Fuqua Island. Welcome to Fuqua. Arrived around 11 a.m. and then went on a random hiking trip with a couple of kids I met at the hostel, Zane, Tim, and Nolan. And I didn't film too much of that because it was just so random. And when I say kids, I literally mean kids. They just graduated high school, so I felt like the old man of the group. <laughs> but anyway, I've got two days here, so don't know what I'm going to do. But I think tonight I'm going to hit the Fuqua Night Market, which is literally right around the corner from the hostel that I'm staying at. And then everything else is pretty much up in the air. We'll see. And just when I was heading out, this happened. Crap. Well, I was gonna go out, but then the storm just kicked in, so I'm gonna wait it out. Hopefully, it dies out before uh, nighttime so I can go to the night market. Soon enough, the rain died out, and I was able to roam around the Fuqua night market. This place looks lively, and there's gotta be something here to eat. It's pretty good. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> it's kind of hard to eat and hold the camera at the same time. I said I was gonna get some real food, but I can't resist coconut. It's really good. a lot of good sweets here but I'm not finding any solid food that's the problem all right I've stuffed myself full of a lot of sweets and good snacks but I, I haven't found anything that yet that I could call actual food and dinner I think I settle on this it's like bond meat with beef. Very simple because I ate so much snacks already. I do miss Vietnam and I do miss Asia, but the one thing I do not miss is the little toddler chairs. They just killed your lower back. That's uh, a wrap for me. It's a good day at the food plot night market. Pretty good stuff. Good morning, day number two from Fuqua. Plan for today. Grab the motorbike, I'm gonna head to the southwestern tip of the island with Philip, who is staying at the hostel with me. You're now in the vlog. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> and then we're gonna take the longest cable car in the world, or in Vietnam, I'm not sure which one it is. Then go to an island called Pineapple Island. All right? Yeah, that's the name of the island. So that's the plan for today. Right now the weather's looking good. Let's just hope it stays that way. Let's go. Pork. All right, we're stopping up for some banh mi breakfast, which is very French inspired and very typical here in Vietnam. So we're driving through some really nice roads right now. The city's really pretty. Welcome to Italy in Vietnam. What is this place? We park down there. Okay. All right, so we just arrived at what appears to be a fake Italy. Um, it's really nice, it's very resorty, but it's completely abandoned and empty. So that's Venice. Yeah. <laughs> and we got the Roman Colosseum over here. About Venice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 23 US dollars for that ticket. Really expensive. That might be uh, post-COVID prices. But it does include the uh, the theme park, which we weren't planning on doing. We we're just gonna do the gondola and then the beach, but I guess now with this price we have to do the theme park. The Fuqua cable car connects Fuqua Island with Han Tham Island, aka Pineapple Island. And coming in at 8 kilometers, the Guinness Book of World Records lists this as the longest non stop three way cable car in the world. We're going all the way to that island over there. There's the water park. Yeah. Aquatopia, here we come. We've opted to stay with the shirts on because uh, if you notice, I forgot to wear sunblock <laughs> and I have excessive farmer's oh, pet sand. <laughs> so and shirts I'm stay low. Move up to the shore. Yeah, <laughs> they gotta balance it out. <laughs> Let's go for the big one. That drop snapped my neck. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> this ride is super fun. The only problem with this park is that they don't actually let you film anything. No. So it's been kind of hard to film this whole experience. Did that one twice. Uh, Philip is doing it three times. That's how much he likes it. I think we're gonna go for the yellow one because it kind of looks like you're getting flushed down the toilet. We're going for round two. This time we're gonna go on the gray one. Oh! That was getting fucked up. 
Good way to end this beautiful water park day. <laughs> yeah, good day today. So it's my last day in Fuqua, and I'm spending it here on Fuqua Beach, which is literally five minutes away from the hostel that I'm staying at. You know, usually in my videos, I try to find something really adventurous and exciting to do for the last day. But I gotta be honest, I've been kind of struggling finding things to do. This seems to be a very chilled island, but. Maybe uh, I should just embrace it, you know, this, maybe this is how we end. Not everything has to end on a high note, even though I'm trying. You know, it, just, it is what it is. I've been waiting so long to come back to Vietnam, and I'm so happy to be here. But we will be doing something later on today, and that is a sunset cruise slash squid fishing dinner, <laughs> which sounds really cool. The only problem is, is that I don't like squid. <laughs> So that's going to be a hard one, but it will be entertaining to see how to fish for squid. So I'm looking forward to that, but I won't be until later on this evening. Until then, just enjoying the view and enjoying the moment here in Vietnam. So it's been good to be back. The tour was a packed bus, which is way more than I'd expect for squid fishing. Okay, we've arrived. We have a busload full of people, but not only am I the only Westerner on that bus, I think I'm the only single person on this tour. The struggles of being a solo traveler. <laughs> Thank you. much of a sunset cruise I mean we haven't taken off yet and we don't really have a sunset so hopefully the squid fishing will make up for the lack of sun all right we're finally taking off I'm not understanding any of that <laughs> I was given some basic tips and lessons for my first attempt at squid fishing okay exciting activity I've ever ended a trip on? No, but I did enjoy it. Actually, I found it quite calming. And at the end of it, there I was sitting at a table with a bunch of locals having dinner and that's what this whole experience is about. The next morning was a flight back to Saigon for a day of rest. And after one month of being in Vietnam, it all came to an end. Vietnam is vibrant, 
There's so many things happening going by so fast that it's hard to capture it all unless you have a camera filming at all times. I personally feel redeemed and satisfied the second time around and I think it's some of the best footage I've ever taken. I'm sure I'll get questions about safety and for anyone that may be concerned, I'll say this. At no point did I ever feel unsafe with my camera. In fact, there were countless occasions where I was asked to take photos with random people simply for being a foreigner. From a personal experience, in Phong Na, I unconsciously left my camera bag at a restaurant with my passport and wallet in it. And after an hour of panicking thinking that my life was over, we backtracked. And there it was, sitting in the same exact location I left it, with the owners waiting for me to pick it up. You post it on Zalo, yeah. and then everybody in the community yeah. will say, we'll if say. you see this card, yeah. um, contact them. Yeah. Wow. I definitely see myself returning for a third time and seeing more of the north side. It's just a matter of time, budget, and when. But that'll have to be another video for the near future. So, until the next one. How's it look? Good? <laughs> Flip it. Mo, uh, uh. mo, I go, I go. That way. Get my stuff. You stuff with what? And about that. You bet. How many times did you do it last year? Oh no. <laughs> did I fall off and be my last moment on camera? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dreams just sank. <laughs> <laughs>